From FNNO.com, this is the Financial News Network. I'm Chuck Pierce, and this is an exclusive interview with Chairman of Canada Lithium, Mr. Kerry Knoll. Thanks for being with us today. Hey, thanks for having me. All right, so first, first Canada Lithium, uh, just give us a brief history of your company and what, what business you're in. Well, we're a mining company. We um, are in the process of constructing a large uh, lithium mine in the province of Quebec, Canada. Um, we have been in the lithium business now for, I think it's uh, just going on four years. In, in that period of time, we uh, acquired a, an old lithium mine that was uh, a producer back in the 1950s and 60s. And then, and then subsequent to that, we, we drilled it off, we, we expanded the reserves, we did a feasibility study, we've raised the money to build the mine, a little over $200 million, and we're just in the very final stages of constructing the mine now. All right, and uh, so obviously lithium is a key ingredient right now in a lot of things, especially with you know us going mobile. It's um, a very big key ingredient in batteries for mobile devices. Uh, what is the importance of lithium, and why why get into lithium? Well, lithium is a is a fascinating element. First of all, it's um, it's it's the lightest metal on the periodic table. It comes after helium and hydrogen and then there's lithium and uh, in fact lithium metal will float on water so it's very light very important when you're talking about mobility um, if you hold the lithium battery compared to a, a another kind of battery you'll feel the difference in, in the lightness of it very important for things like electric cars there's even electric airplanes now coming uh, coming in the testing phase so those lightness is very important but more significant than that is that lithium can hold a higher electric charge they call it in the business energy density than any other metal. So it can hold more electricity and it's lighter. So it's kind of a no-brainer that lithium would be the thing to use, but it's also a very complex element. And it, 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 it's, um, it's, it's really been difficult to get to where we are. The first lithium battery was commercialized by Sony in 1991. And it's taken now another tw 20 plus years to get where we are now, where, where your cell phone with a lithium battery can actually last for several days, uh, where cars can go, the new Teslas can go 450 kilometers, 300 miles on a single charge. That stuff has taken a lot of research. And now that research is ramped up and it's only going to get better for, for lithium. And, and there's uh, something like 27,000 patents for lithium batteries on the U.S. Patent Trademark Office, and about half a dozen coming in every week. There's a lot of research being done into these batteries. And, but we saw lithium and portable um, energy as being the way of the future, and, and, it, and, and we were correct. Um, we thought that uh, electric cars would roll out a little faster than they did. We were wrong on that, but hybrids have rolled out. 20% uh, of car sales in Japan right now, a million cars a year are hybrids, and those all have lithium batteries in them iPads, you see there's new iPads, there's um, you know your phones, everything, there's a, now a billion smartphones on the planet. One in seven people on the planet have a smartphone. It's incredible numbers. They all have lithium batteries. All right, and for your mind specifically, uh, what, what are your forecasts for the output there, uh, specifically I guess in the next year when you start um, production? We, uh, next year we're uh, we're going to be selling our lithium carbonate by about March. Okay, so we'll, we'll be producing a little bit before then, but really starting to sell it in March. Full production by the fourth quarter. So next year we're looking at 10 to 12,000 tons of lithium carbonate. That's what the, the starting uh, formula is for, for, uh, for batteries. 20,000 tons, you can translate that in dollar-wise, it sells for about $6,000 a ton, so we're looking at about $120 million in revenue at full production which will happen in 2014. Beyond that, um, we rather than looking at, at, at different lithium projects, there's a lot of different lithium chemistries out there and different requirements. There's lithium chloride, there's lithium hydroxide, lithium metal. And all of those different things uh, need more infrastructure to create. And we want to stick with lithium. We have a high quality lithium product and we want to go downstream into the different things that different battery companies want. There's about 25 different lithium chemistries available on the market for lithium batteries right now. And that's probably going to 
double or triple over the next couple of years. So they, the end users want different things, and we want to be there to provide it for them. We're working with different battery companies in, in Asia to figure out exactly what they want now and what they want in a couple of years so that we can make that product for them. Uh, in terms of the forecast of your production, what is the biggest obstacle that you see going into that? Well, historically, the, the biggest obstacle, of course, was getting the money to do it. Lithium, the, the world's lithium is mainly produced by four different companies, and that's going to three with a recent takeover. So um, it's not well understood in the banking system and in the market as to what exactly a lithium mine is. So we had to get over that obstacle and raise the money. We've done that. We've, we're financed to production. Uh, going forward, I think the biggest next um, hurdle we have is to get the end users to accept our product. Um, and it's nothing to do with our product per se, it's that they don't know us. And they're used to buying lithium from these other producers. So we, we are, as soon as we start producing, we have to get samples out for them, they have to test them in their labs and make sure that what they are what they need. Because uh, different companies need different types of lithium. They're not all the same. All right. And do you have any other projects you're looking at in uh, the North America or anywhere else? Right now, we have looked at a number of different projects. Um, we've looked at some other components for batteries, such as graphite. Uh, we're not sure where that market's going, uh, so we, we've backed off from that. We've looked at other lithium projects as well, but ours, you know, right now we're sitting at, uh, we're going to be about 12% of world production with um, a, a, right now a 14-year mine life, and that's going to probably increase as we do more drilling. So right now, we're really focusing on downstream products, such as lithium metal. For example, lithium carbonate sells for about $6,000 a ton, while lithium metal sells for $68,000 a ton. So there's a big value added there, and there's only a couple of producers of lithium metal in the world right now, so we want to get into that space, for example. So I think downstream products are, are, are going to be our focus in the near term. And uh, lastly, for our viewers watching this, why should they invest in Canada Lithium? <laughs> well, right now, um, the other three large producers after this takeover uh, of an Australian company is happening, there will only be one listed company in North America that is a pure lithium play. So if you want to invest in lithium, if you want to invest in the components of the electronic age that's happening with portable electronics right now, we're really the only company you can invest in. There's, there's a couple of other companies that are developing that maybe in 2015, 2016 will be in production. I don't see anyone else being in production before then. So um, that would be the main reason. If you believe that electronics are, are going to increase in demand worldwide, then we're, we're a good place to invest in that, in that revolution. All right. And uh, where is your company listed? We're trading on the Toronto Stock Exchange. Um, we trade uh, a lot. We trade about 18, 19 million shares a month. And uh, we're also listed on the uh, over-the-counter market here, um, the OTCQX, I think it's called. But uh, most of our trading is, uh, is done on, uh, on the Toronto Stock Exchange. All right. Thank you very much for being us, uh, with us, Mr. Noel. Hey, thanks for having me. All right. And for more updates and analysis of the business world and interviews like this one, keep it right here to the Financial News Network and on our website at FNNO.com.